Thank you so much, Abdullah. Good afternoon. Great. <laughs> Hope you had a good lunch. Yes? Great. And we all are not sleepy. <laughs> Great. Thanks for stopping. Um, today we are going to talk about diversity and inclusion, which is not a gender gap. Uh, whenever I've heard this like diversity and inclusion, everyone thinks about gender diversity. Everyone says it's just a gender diversity. So here I am talking about gender diversity. Apart from that, there are many more other forms are there. But if it's not a gender issue, is it a hiring problem? Because we talk a lot about skill shortage in cybersecurity or in general IT. Is it about age problem? Because we have a lot of millennials in cybersecurity or in general in IT. Is it about ethnicity problem? Or it's just about filling a quota. A lot of people, I have heard that we have some recs open and we only want to hire diversity. Diverse candidates who are women. Trust me, it's no good as a woman. I don't like hearing that. So if it's not all of that, what is it? It's actually a lot more. There are many aspects to it. There are, and diversity is actually good for us. Um, when I say diversity is not just about men and women, what it is, it's actually creating an inclusive culture for all of us, for all the people who are there in the room. If you look around, there are people from different uh, continents, from different geographies, different age groups, uh, different backgrounds. I believe not all of us are from the application security background. As Abdullah said that I had a training yesterday with over 35 people, both men and women. Um, so in that training itself, we had people from uh, SOC, uh, SOC background, which is Security Operations Center. We had uh, people from uh, IoT background, they wanted to know more about application security. Developers, college students, talk about any, any different background, and I saw that people were there. So before I, had, uh, before I actually deep dive into my talk, I want to introduce myself. I am Vandana. Um, professionally or for my day job, I work with IBM India Software Labs as a security architect wherein I heavily worked, uh, work on DevSecOps and cloud security. Apart from that, I am very passionate about uh, giving back to the community because I have received a lot. The stage that I have got, it's because of the work that I've done for the community or the work that I actually, I have learned from the community. About my journey, after college, I got into my first job, which was not a security job. It was just a plain IT job. I was working as a developer. After a year, I was actually given a project to work in security. It was kind of an accidental. I was actually nowhere targeting security. But that's when I realized that this is the place where I want to be in. From the SOC, um, from the SOC analyst to SOC expert and SME in SOC, moving to application security, understanding how application security works, how the architecture is. Moving on to cloud security, being a manager of a big team, handling the whole security from India. Now I'm a security architect for, uh, for my organization, working on DevSecOps and cloud security. About my community journey, my journey never completes without the community. Uh, uh, I started off um, with Null and OWASP. Um, OWASP, Bangalore, Null, Bangalore. And, um, that's where I actually stepped into first into the community. Uh, from there, I was introduced to InfoSec Girls, which I revived, and now it's going on smooth. Apart from that, I'm also part of OWASP Bangalore, now leading OWASP Bangalore, um, co-lead for OWASP Bangalore. Uh, apart from that, I'm also part of OWASP Women and AppSec, through which we do a lot of uh, different initiatives, like we give free trainings. As I said, that we gave a free training uh, yesterday in DC. And uh, we are targeting that we will be giving the similar kind of uh, sessions and maybe more on, on cloud security, DevSecOps, or can be any, anything else. But it's gonna be uh, free of charge for anyone to attend. Apart from that, uh, I give talks and uh, talks and 
trainings at um, o multiple OWASP conferences, and I was an assistant trainer at Black Hat this year, which was a big opportunity for me. Uh, apart from that, I was um, I was speaker at uh, DEF CON, uh, AppSec Village. I also uh, trained at Diana Initiative. Apart from that, I got an opportunity to be at B-Sides LV, wherein uh, one of the trainer um, had issues and um, his flight got delayed, and he wanted me to support his training. So it was a big opportunity for me, and it was like an amazing journey uh, in, at the Hacker Summer Camp. And on cherry, uh, cherry on top of a cake that I got to receive an award from Women Cyber Jitsu. Uh, apart from this, uh, I al we also run a conference called OWASP Seaside. So I am one of the co-organizers for OWASP Seaside and uh, B-Sides Delhi. Now, moving back to the topic. When we say, like, we started off by talking about inclusion, diversity, all different things. But how about knowing about different forms? Differently able, differently able people. The name itself says people with different abilities. People who actually have uh, uh, power to innovate and bring back so much to the, uh, to the community, to the organizations. Ethnicity, diverse ethnicity. Education, people from different educational backgrounds. Culture, as I said, we can see people from different uh, cultural backgrounds in the room. As we are at the APSEC conference, age, neurodiversity. Now, these are just some of the forms that I've listed here, but there are many, many forms. Uh, so while I was working on this topic, I have been uh, trying to be very much involved in diversity and inclusion, but while I was preparing for this talk, I went through so many articles and I got to know that the, the information that we have is just very limited. And there are so many aspects to it. There are so many things that we can work on, and not just men and women or just gender diversity. Being a, uh, being a woman, I am saying that, but I have actually realized while I was working on all these initiatives that we have to do a lot of work and I am not including gender gap any which ways. We have to work on all of it together. And when we say cybersecurity, it's again a big tent wherein we have diversity. Talk about SOC. We have people working on incidents. They are monitoring the traffic. We have uh, IT admins, network admins, and so many other people who are working closely together so that the organizations can be secure. Likewise, um, when we talk about applications, we have uh, SDLC, Agile, we have DevSecOps, all of it. There are multiple people working together, development team, security team, operations team. Think about if all of them are not working together, what will happen? The application will go down. The hacks that we have been hearing in the past few years, those are the major hacks of the few, actually, uh, 10, 20 years. So we need to make sure we, included all, we include all these forms when we say diversity and inclusion, not just gender diversity. Hope everyone knows this man, right? Stephen Hawking. I am a big fan of his work. Think about diversity. He's one of the greatest example of what diversity can give back to the community, can give back to the society. He is one of the genius of his times. He has given so much, so much to us. But can disability or can uh, something else stop him? No. He, everybody knows it. At least in the room, I can assume that everybody knows him. Right? Perfect. So uh, this is one of the research from Howard, which is a pre-employment uh, research company. They try and do research uh, around that uh, who should be hired, who, who have been hired, what's the diversity gap, what's the gap in the industry, all of it. So if you look at the first um, graph, look, look in the beginning, we had only males. And then suddenly, we included gender diversity to it. We had a good decision-making power. But after that, we included age to it. Then we included age gender, and geographic diversity to it. What happened? We got the best of results. 
This is not me speaking. I have got the stats from the um, from Harvard, and you can actually look up at the internet. They ha they have been doing research from quite some time now, and we can see that if we have people from diverse backgrounds, uh, from different cultures, from different geographies, it makes a whole lot of difference, and it makes a different a difference in um, giving your opinions as well, thinking about a problem, resolving that problem. It makes a huge, huge difference. Now, being a woman who supports a lot of diverse issues, diversity issues, and I'm a big champion of uh, diversity, specifically gender diversity. But trust me, it's the time to change the dialogue. It's the time to change the narrative. By just focusing on women in, or by just focusing of saying that women in, women in security, women in this, that, we are actually dividing the depleted workforce more. This is not what we have to do when we say diversity and inclusion. We have to include other forms of diversity as well. We have to include people who, who actually do not know anything about cybersecurity or even IT, or who actually want to come forward and say, I want to be part, but I'm not, I don't know where I stand. Can you help me? So that's where we actually need to help. And uh, there are a lot of action items that we have to take from this. And uh, before I actually move uh, ahead of the slides, I have to say that this talk um, is based on my views and understanding of the topic. This nowhere relates to my employer or anyone else. And I really don't want to impose uh, my views on anyone, but I want to share my experience and view views that I have um, uh, got while working on this particular area. If you have any opinions, any information, any feedback, we can have a discussion. I would really love to work with all of you and help you in getting uh, the diverse culture more. I would really be like to involve more, and we have a lot of initiatives going. We would like to uh, be involved in, uh, be involved with all of you. Yeah, this is I love. So when we say uh, gender diversity, or gender di uh, diversity is never about bringing up gender diverse issues and bringing down men. I never believe that. It never makes sense to me. Because I have got the best of mentors from the community, and they are mostly men and women, and people from different age groups. So I would never ever say, bring down men and bring up women. I am against that narrative altogether, or I am against that point or a dialogue. Uh, the main thing that we have to work on is the preconceived notions. Like, uh, I've been hearing from some, I, somebody said, that girls can only play with the dolls and boys can only play with the robots. Dude, there are so many amazing women who are doing exceptional in robotics. One, uh, so I, I, I was researching, there's one woman I came across, Fifi Lee. She's from Google Cloud, she's doing actually exceptionally well with robotics. And same goes with men. I know friends who are amazing chefs. I cannot cook that well that they're so wonderful. They're working for uh, one of the top class hotels. Think about that. And it's never about gender. There are a few things which we actually need to uh, work upon based on the cultural issues, but still, there is more to it. Now, when we say diversity, it's never to take out someone or existing groups, but bringing in more people, but bringing more people in, more diversity into it, my, by bringing more culture to it. That's where we actually work on. That's where we actually need to head on. If we don't care about that, we're gonna be in big, big trouble. Uh, I'll give you an example of my friend. Uh, when we were working on hiring new people in our team, it's, it's one of the case from my old organizations and my old experiences. So uh, this person was from a commerce background totally unrelated to cybersecurity, right? Commerce and cybersecurity, it's like two different zones. Who thinks a commerce person can be a good cybersecurity person? It's just an assumption, right? So, um, but when we looked into his uh, profile and we started chatting with him, we got to know that he's a really good security researcher and a bug bounty hunter. Lot of holes, uh, hall of fames or claim to fame on his name. 
and trust me, we actually hired him. We did not think about or we did not give a second thought. He was in our team. But what happens next? He actually had a very hard time switching jobs. His application used to get rejected in the first few screenings itself. Like he filed a job, uh, he filled his uh, CV, he shared his CVs with a lot of people. But guess what? People were not considering it. Why? Because he's from a, uh, he's from a commerce background, but not from the cybersecurity. But right now, as of today, he's actually heading, he's one of the directors for one of the very renowned MNCs. It makes a huge difference. People actually looked into his capabilities and now where he is. So I'm trying to give you all these examples because uh, I'm trying to give you the perspective from different angles, which is like, for this case, it's about educational background. So when um, there's another um, argument that I've been hearing, we are a merit-based system. We're going to be hiring only people who are in the industry for so many years. These many years do, have done this, have done that. Especially, I'll give you an example. People say that I am a DevSecOps expert. I need a DevSecOps expert in my team. Since when we started talking about DevSecOps, like four or five years back, and DevSec, uh, DevOps is uh, no, uh, was not actually in existence before 2007 or eight. Like nobody used to talk about that. Everybody was working in silos and nobody was actually considering talking about all that. Now, you say that I need people with the experience of 10 years in DevSecOps. How can you get it? We never started talking about it. When you never started talking about it, how can you get the people in the room with that experience? Trust me, it's very funny. <laughs> So we need to ensure that first we are giving the opportunities to the people. Then we can actually judge uh, whether they, sh they are deserved, they are deserving candidates or not. Uh, another example that I would like to highlight, uh, it's my personal example, wherein uh, I saw that one of the team around me uh, had five opportunities or five job, uh, job requisitions open. They said, uh, we're going to be giving it away, like we want to hire people. What happens next? There were 30 job applications or 30 resumes submitted for that particular, uh, for, that, for those particular job roles. And guess what? All those 30 applications from the similar circle, similar set of people from the similar organization, what happens next? The similar people will be hired. We know them, we're gonna be hiring them. That's about it. But trust me, it's going to be hampering, in, uh, hampering big time in the long run. I am a big preacher or a big supporter of merit-based system. But when we say merit-based system, we need to make sure that we have a room for people to grow. If we can't give room for people to grow, we can never say that we are going to be only merit-based system. This implies only when, when you actually have uh, trust in yourself and you, can know, you know that you're going to be supporting all those people. Training on the job. Um, when you have a student, can you expect him to do a cybersecurity job on the very first day? Never ever. I can never expect. Now I believe that because of bug bounties, all the vulnerabilities, a lot of buzz around cybersecurity, you might see people know about security or the college students might know about cybersecurity. But from the first day, I never knew. While I was growing up, I never knew cybersecurity was ever a career. Here I am standing with a good experience in cybersecurity. But you can't say that I'm only going to be hiring based on the merit. You have to give opportunities. My favorite time. So um, I'm going to be talking about the land that I come from, India. India has various uh, diverse cultures, not just cultures, religions, food habits, climates. Think about anything. It's diverse. Every 100 to 200 kilometers, food habits change. The way people dress up change. Languages change. Like over 30 that I know that there are languages. Not just English, Hindi, so many other languages. So uh, now let's talk about uh, a little bit more about when we say diverse culture. Uh, you might have heard about Ladakh or Kerala. 
I, so last when I was here, last, uh, last month when I was here at the airport, San Francisco airport, I saw uh, a big hoarding of Kerala saying, uh, welcome to India, welcome to Kerala, truly India, all of that. So Ladakh is, uh, is in the northern parts of India, which is a cold desert, as it's part of the Himalayan region. And it's a beautiful paradise. In in, on the contrary, Kerala, uh, it has, uh, it's in the southern, southwestern part of India. It has ocean on one side and mountains on the other side. It's beautiful with the tropical climate. Now, if you see um, that when you go to east, the climate changes. Likewise, when you go to uh, west, it changes altogether. The same way, Mumbai and Bangalore are two metropolitan cities, wherein Mumbai is famous for its staple food, vada pav. And Bangalore is famous for uh, its dosa, which are like salty pancakes. And when I was discussing about this talk, somebody said, burrito. Like, nice name. I'm going to use that. So, um, and people cherish it. When they move from one state to another, they try and get uh, custom with the different staple foods and try and enjoy it. These diversities actually created a diverse culture or actually had, has led to the evolution uh, to a different culture, the way people dress up, the way people eat, the way people uh, uh, think in general, everything. There are a lot of initiatives uh, that are happening uh, from giving rights to the transgenders, giving uh, opportunities to the third gender. Apart from that first day of period, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be everywhere. Or I've heard that it's globally. Uh, the lot of organizations are giving this particular leave. There, there are food joints in Mumbai. I know that that's been run by mute people. The day I was there, trust me, it was super amazing. They cannot speak your language, our language, but they can help you in the best way possible. The hospitality was wonderful. That's one of the diverse culture examples. We still have a long way to go, but I just wanted to share uh, uh, something about the diversity and the country that I come from. Now, about my experiences and learnings, um, I have my fair share of experiences, both good and bad, while I was working on the uh, in the industry and in IT or cybersecurity. My first step in the community. The day I was, like, um, it's just at the random, meta, uh, random uh, training, I was introduced to the null meets and OWASP meets. Somebody told me that I'm another chapter leader for OWASP Bangalore. You should come to the meets. I said, wow, that there is some group that exists and talk about the same language that I speak. Wonderful, I should go. What happens next? I go the very next month, because it's a monthly meet, so the very next month I go there. And in the room of 20 people, I'm the only woman. Nobody intimidated me. Nobody said a word. But I did not go to the next couple of meets. Why? Because I was feeling the odd one out. Nobody made me feel. But I was like, I cannot go back. I am the only one. What will they think? I don't know anything. Am I a stupid person? I don't know what to do. But after a couple of months, I pulled myself up, got the courage, and thought, I'm going to nail it. I'm going to be there. Because if I am not there, I'm never going to learn. I went there, got introduced to a lot of people, got to know about InfoSec Girls, revived it, and started talking with um, other people and understanding that what's the issue they're facing. A lot of, lot of people said that they, it's the same experience they had. And it's not just with men and women. It's, it was with students. It was with people who had experience of like 15 years, 20 years. They were very reluctant. They were saying, this is the space for the beginners, or for the millennials, or for the people who are super grammars. It did not sound right to me. So uh, as a leader, I tried to take it up with other leaders, and, um, and I try and create a space wherein we all are feeling safe. We all are feeling that we have a sense of belonging. And that's how we try and cherish the diversity in the group. And every month, uh, I can see that there are close to 100 people that come to the meet. 
ranging from different backgrounds, different cultures, different cities, uh, anywhere, what I've seen that if any of the person, even from the uh, OWASP different chapters, we have people from different chapters, from Houston chapter, from, uh, uh, there was one more chapter, I don't remember, but yes, we had a lot of people from different chapters, San Francisco chapter. So all of us are collaborating. That's, that's diversity. That's one form of diversity. Trust me, this kills the more. This kills the most. Um, I had, uh, everyone has certain biases which people talk about, some people don't talk about. Now here I am talking about my biases. While I was carrying, I was worrying about my career, uh, my job, and so many other things. I, ha I had a lot of questions creeping in my mind, whether I'll come back to work or not, whether I'll be, after a year or after six months, I'll be relevant to the industry or not. All those questions, instead of enjoying my uh, maternity, these questions actually kills a lot, the preconceived notion that we have. And it's not just me. One of my friends who wanted to go for sabbatical because he wanted to uh, take time off and wanted to explore uh, the Himalayan region, he just wanted to go away for some time. What happens? In the rat race, people tend to forget what we want, what we want to do, what we want in our life. So when we talk about preconceived notions, we tend to forget that we have different people who talk about it and who don't talk about it. We just need to help them out. We, they just need a listening ear. And that's why we community is here to help them, give them a pathway. So um, as a SOC analyst, as I said that uh, my first job was as a SOC analyst. And I was asked to work in night shifts. So there are, uh, again, it's more of a preconceived notion wherein a women might not want to work in night shifts. And trust me, there are a lot of women who, who don't want to work in night shifts. But I was asked to work in night shifts because uh, the client that I was working with, uh, all the leadership was in US and I had to be there as an SME to support them, to make sure that everything is up and running. I had no issues. I was learning a lot. I, had, uh, I, I might have not learned a lot when I, w I used to be in the, you know, like, I might have been in the morning shift, but in the night shift, while working with them very closely, how servers work, how vulnerability assessment work, all of that, I learned a lot. And by this, in my organization, I paved a path for other women to be part of the SOC team. And they could also be in the night shift, which was very beneficial for me. Now, when I say making progress, we are actually making progress. All the people in the room, are actually here to listen to this talk, it in itself says that yes, we want to talk about diversity and inclusion and we want to be part of it in some way, if not gender diversity. But we still have a long way to go and we have a lot of um, good, uh, good items in our bucket which we have done, which we have achieved. See, at the Global AppSec Conference itself, we have people from different age groups, different ethnicity. I have been talking with people uh, from different groups, so I can see, yes, there are, right? Do we have people from uh, uh, London in the room? Yeah, we do have. Do we have people from Asia in the room? Do we have people from America in the room? Yeah, see, we have, we have, we have people. Do we have any students in the room? Yeah, we do have. How about people who are just getting started with the security? Do we have? Yes, we do have. How about people who have like 15 years of experience? Amazing, I'm not gonna talk about age. That's a very tricky thing. <laughs> so I'm not gonna talk about it. So apart from that, the most pressing ones, the issues, the most pressing issues, be it cybersecurity or um, in general IT, they are not at all related to technical details or technical things. People like project managers, people like um, uh, SOC analysts, or even the people who are working on just the, uh, uh, the Excel sheets or report re reading, 
All those people are, re uh, are actually required. IT admins, network admins, Linux admins, Windows admins, all of them are required. If we do not have people working together from different, uh, different sections, we are not going to be sustaining. So how is diversity useful in cybersecurity? One of the things that we all need to, uh, we need to be very cautious when we talk about uh, that how should we move forward, what people should we hire. Look at what you need, what experience you need, not the gender, not the age group. People with, uh, with two years of experience might be able to do a really amazing job, but you're saying, I need only people with CISP, this, that, so many things, you can't question people on that. Look at their capabilities. And age is never a problem. Trust me, I have got mentors who are like 50 plus, and they have shaped my career in a big way. I have had such good experiences wherein I have learned from their experiences, wherein I don't, did not have to bang my head against a problem, wherein they have experienced that, and they could help me out. Apart from that, um, as I said, cybersecurity scale gap, we have 100,000 job open, I'm like, we have so many uh, recs open, we have a skill shortage, we have this, that. But can you fill that by just saying it? I don't think so. We need people to fill those positions. How do you get those positions uh, filled? How do you get to the, those people? You need to support them. You need to actually embrace wherein people are saying that I want to be part of it, help me out. Right? Right? Perfect. Apart from that, um, group thinking is the one that actually kills. I'll give you an example. Supposedly, there are four people who, ha who have passed out from the same college, same professors, same degree, everything is just same. Fortunately, they get hired for the similar same company. X, Y, Z. What's going to happen? If they face any problem, they're going to be thinking almost similar. That's called group thinking. We need to make sure that we avoid that group thinking. Even to a problem, they will be approaching the same way. The similar thoughts will come. OK, we're going to be thinking this way. We're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing this. It's going to be the same. I have experienced it with my peers, with the people whom I have actually done my bachelor degree, we all think alike. Even sometimes we just need to, do not need to speak. We just um, talk in eyes. Even now with my team, sometimes we just don't utter a word. If there is an outbreak, uh, especially during the WannaCry outbreak, we looked at each other, what we need to do. And those eyes spoke, because we know that we all are working in the same team, uh, day in and day out. And most of the time, what happens with us, we spend less time at home, but more in office, right? So office peers are the best pals that we have. So that's how you make a good bonding with them. However, you need people who can actually challenge the status question, who can say, okay, you have a perspective, but I have a perspective too. And sometimes, it can be really beneficial too, wherein there are four people who are saying one thing, but there is another person who might have something creative to say and the problem can be solved in a better way or can actually be addressed in a very uh, unique way. Apart from that, diversity also helps in creative thinking. Not just creative thinking, it also gives you a different perspective, viewpoint, or vintage points. And with those vintage points, we can actually look at multiple perspectives. We do not need to look at all the problems with a single lens. We need multiple perspectives, we need multiple opinions to address all the issues. Not just cybersecurity, not just diversity, but any issue that you can think of. Um, think about the personal problems that we have. If you do not talk, talk about that with someone, it's just gonna be, I have this and I cannot overcome. By talking with some people, maybe your parents, maybe the people whom you know, your friends, it's gonna be resolved, right? And problems need to be resolved, rather it can be a big problem. Apart from that, uh, we actually tend to get creative ideas, innovative ideas. Uh, I have seen that if you have multiple people from different regions, 
like Africa, Asia, uh, or America, like all of the people working together in a single room, we might have a beautiful product coming out of the room, beautiful inputs coming out of the room. And last but not the least, diversity cultivates diversity. If I can, so this means that if I can do, you can do too. And if you have people from diverse group in a room, the groom, trust me, will be full of ideas. I have a lot of ideas. But if I don't know with whom to share, it will never be sustaining. And when we talk about all the patents, innovations, how does that happen? Somebody has to think about it, somebody has to talk about it, and then share it with the rest of the world. That's how we move forward. So, I have a son, and uh, when I preach a lot about diversity, I want to make sure that my son have role models. Not just one, it could be many. He can, actually look up the, uh, who, he can actually look up to the people who supports diversity and inclusion, who respect other people, other people's ideas, viewpoints. So when he grows up, he can think that yes, there are people who support each other, who knows what to do, when to do, and how to support other people. If you start looking down at the people, trust me, this is not what I really want. And the similar way, if we have cybersecurity, we need people who respect each other, who actually care for the other person, who give them the room to the, to the other person to grow. So here we are. How do we move forward? As an organization, we need to make sure we embrace the diverse thoughts. That should be the first and foremost opportunity. And it's not just going to be a beneficial for the organization. Uh, it's not going to be beneficial for the diverse candidates. And trust me, it's never a charity. Never ever a charity. It's going to be always beneficial for our organization, for our, uh, uh, for our maybe growth, monetary benefits, because everyone talks about monetary benefits. Diversity bring mon monetary benefits. There are stats around it. Unconscious bias. We have to make sure that we don't have preconceived notions for certain groups or people. That I'm not going to be hiring from this state, I'm not going to be hiring from this state, I'm not going to be hiring from this country, I'm not going to be hiring from this particular uh, age group. This is never going to work out. We need to make sure we have an inclusive culture. And apart from that, we are not enforcing our own beliefs on the people we have around. They have their own viewpoint, listen to it. Might be they have something better to say. Might be there, there's something nicest there. I have got amazing outputs from the room. I have been talking uh, with a lot of people from past couple of days, and uh, even on, the, on my talk, I have received a lot of amazing output. As an employee, we all are employees, we work for certain organization, sometimes we, we all work for ourselves. Right? There are people who are CEOs, CDOs, who are um, uh, the starter, startup CEOs, and the, the people who run the company. And what do we need to do? When we hire people, they will have certain backgrounds. We need to actually uh, open up our mind. We need to embrace them. We need to welcome them with an open mind. They might not be from the same background. They might not be from the similar culture. They might not be with the same experience when that person is in the team. If we help him, if we give, give him a warm hug, or if we give him a warm path, trust me, that person is going to be uh, helping you out, respecting you way too much. Apart from that, we all have made mistakes, and we all will. Now, when a new person joins in, can we just embrace him and say, OK, if you have made a mistake, it's completely OK. It's completely fine. We will learn from our mistakes, and we are there to help you out. If you make a mistake, or if you, are, if you have any doubts, just let us know. We will be there to help you out. Apart from that, uh, the example that I gave uh, about hiring uh, from the same similar set of people, if you have a group of people, you know and you've been working around, or you know it from the community, or from anywhere else, I'm not saying it's bad. It's good. Knowing there are people and getting them in the room, it's good. But how about getting to know more people? You might make new friends. You might get better ideas. You might create your, another company, right? So making sure that we actually help people outside of our circle. 
talk to them. And here at the conferences, people come to learn network. Trust me, the first day that I entered into the meetups, people say, do networking, do networking. Without networking, you're never going to be survive, surviving in um, information security or security in general. That's the best way to be, um, be part. And even because of the community, I'm here. Or the work uh, that I got to do, people actually uh, gave me an opportunity so that I can, I can contribute back to the society or the community. Apart from that, how about going to the different security groups? There are multiple groups which say, I am working on IT security, I am working on cloud security, I am working on DevSecOps, I am working on this security. All are working in their own silos, all are working on their own things. How about bringing all of that together? So um, in the afternoon itself, I was talking with Francisco. And he was saying that he has been trying to pull, again, pull together multiple opportunities, multiple uh, um, uh, organizations together so that we all can talk the same language, security. It's never DevSecOps, uh, cloud security, application security, or SOC security. We all have to talk the same language. And we all, trust me, even when we say different diverse um, uh, sections of security, again, we are embracing security, uh, we are embracing diversity in it. And we are including people from diverse groups. I was a SOC analyst. I was nowhere into application security. But people helped me out. And I'm talking about application security and giving trainings. That's the fun part. And people are loving it. Uh, yeah, I hope they are, but yes. <laughs> Uh, as a hiring manager, trust me, this person has the most uh, amazing job and has the most responsibility. When cyber leaders say that we do not have people who are from diverse background, how do we do it? We can't do anything. We can't um, hire these people. We can't do anything. We cannot move forward. But trust me, this person can help retain the talent, diverse groups, and can also look for the people who are the best suited for the organization. Could be from a commerce background, could be from a psychology background. So I'll give you an example here. Um, now, I know a friend who's a psychologist. Trust me, psychologist and cybersecurity, who thinks about that? But he is so wonderful and OSINT, which is open source intelligence because we've been talking about um, that lately. And that person is so good in uh, connecting the dots. And who can think that a psychologist will say that I am really amazing in social engineering and OSINT, and I can get you what you're looking for. And the most importantly, sometimes you even don't know what you are, who you are, at the social media, and he can do the mind map and give you the ho whole result and what people think of you. Think about that. Cyber lawyers. Uh, or the criminal justice lawyers. They work day in and day out with cyber criminals. Getting to know what the criminal's mentality is. And especially when we say cyber criminals or cr uh, the criminals who are taking out a lot of data, money, and they're harming the countries, especially in the case of uh, nation state actors. We need people who think out of the box, who can actually map the threat intelligence, who can, uh, who can profile the threat actors? And there are not, there's not just one group. There are hundreds of security groups or um, hacker groups actually trying to harm all of it. And hackers are actually, I mean, the malicious hackers. Hackers are good. We all are hackers, right? Right? We all are hackers. We are hacking our own companies and trying to secure that. Especially when we say AppSec conference, yes. As an application security engineer, I try and hack my own company and save it so that nobody else can hack it. Apart from that, uh, when we say hiring, that can also be done at the conference like this. And as we have diverse groups, people might want to hire you. And I remember there are booths out there uh, downstairs near the Lincoln Rooms that we have a um, lot of organizations coming not just for the promotions, but they might want to hire you. So you can just go and meet them up. You might get a nice opportunity there, um, a job opportunity here. As a community, this talk never is never ever complete without saying that. Because of the community, I am here. Trust me, without that, I can never move ahead. 
I could have never done what I am doing right now with the people in this, uh, in this room. Talk about Harold, talk about Lisa, talk about Kelly, uh, Ma Mike, so many other people. Talk about Zoe and Tanya. So there are so many people who, who are my role models. So I've got so much and just because of the community. The only thing that we have to be very careful that we greet people and be with the people with a warm heart. If there is no warmness, we would never be able to survive. We need people who can say that, yes, I'm there to support you. I'm not gonna be spoon feeding you, but I'm gonna be there. If you fall, I'm gonna make sure that I'm there for you. Anything you need, just give me a call. Just send me a text. I might not be able to answer it right away, but I might be able to answer it at a later point, might be a day later or whenever I have access to it. Uh, apart from that, from the communities, what I've learned that there are so many opportunities, so many scholarships, so, so many uh, grants that have been given to the people. We just need to reach out to people that how to get in there. That's about it. And there are things which are already there, which people might not know. If you know about it, please share it with people. Please share it further. And it's going to be in turn helping them out. And they're, they're going to be always thanking you. I always thank my mentors. That's why whenever the community work comes in, I always say, uh, I, I'm going to be talking about the, my mentors and the people. Uh, so the key takeaways. This is not the lifestyle, but I'm just going to be saying that when we say um, diversity, how about realizing that rather than just hiring people from or women from the top schools, how about we hiring people from diverse backgrounds? As I said, psychology, OSINT, people from development background, operations background to application security. Rather than hiring the, the brightest of millennials, how about giving an opportunity to the people uh, who have good experience or who, have, who are like, when we say age, um, the people who are from the armed forces or maybe who have been in the industry for a quite long time. Trust me, they can strive more than anyone else can. They have experienced anything and everything, starting from when the computers were coming in, now when we have like full-fledged everything running with 100 MPPS and what not. Apart from that, we need to be collaborative, not just the organizations. Everyone needs to be very collaborative. There are organizations which are uh, open, like uh, Women Economic Forum. West Women at AppSec, InfoSec Girls, WooSec, Grace Hopper, so many wonderful organizations are there. They're trying to help. It's just that we need to be ready to take help from them. There's no shame in that. Everybody should be able to take help from. And diversity is actually big, um, is being invited to the party, and inclusion is being actually asked to dance. We need to make sure that we are dancing when we're talking about diversity and inclusion. Every time we hire a diverse candidate, we always make sure we enjoy that. We have some nice balloons, cake, something really exciting for that person. It's not just that, but yeah, we get it for everyone. So you can actually reach me uh, here on Twitter. I'm super active uh, on LinkedIn or on my email address. This week, I wouldn't be able to answer my emails, but yes. Twitter, Facebook, uh, Twitter and LinkedIn, Facebook, I am like super lazy, so you wouldn't find me there. About the references, uh, you might not be able to see them very, oh, it's very clear, yes. So, uh, but uh, when I'll share the slides, you can actually look back. There are, there's some really amazing research here. I would like to thank these amazing people, but I would say, um, now, I don't, if I don't follow what I preach, which I say diversity and inclusion, so if you look at the slides, all these people, all of them are from the different parts of the world. Tanya is from Canada, uh, Ashwini is from Mumbai, Anand is from Bhopal, India, Sandeep is from Delhi, Akash is from Bangalore, Jim Manico is from uh, in, in New York, and so many other places, or oh, Hawaii, I should say. Uh, Nicole Becker is, um, she's, from New, she's a New Yorker. Uh, we have Zoe, we have Martin. Trust me, I would like to thank all of these people for hearing me out, what I wanted to say. And I wanted to make sure that I am not saying anything wrong when I'm on stage. I was super nervous. Thank you so much, and thanks for bearing with me.
if you have any questions, inputs, feedbacks, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to be around um, during the coffee break, in the evening networking dinner, um, tomorrow, the whole day. Even while I go back, I'm always open for discussions. Feel free to reach out. And I've, I'm always looking for people who are actually uh, who, who are willing to help. And uh, there's, no, there's never uh, less hands what people say. So thank you so much. Look forward to meeting with some of you, a lot of you.